Good morning, folks. Saying goodbye to the lone active region on the Earth facing half of the sun, we've not only got news from beneath our feet and out into deep space, but back in time and looking ahead as well. Starting at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on the sun were relatively quiet. Towards the end of the frame, around the 10 o'clock position, should be able to see another active region heading in. The solar wind is relatively calm, but the phi angle of the plasma stream is in flux. The magnetic change and the density it carries are all we have in the solar wind, more than we had a couple of days ago, but still relatively quiet. Folks, there are a number of blood echoes striking amidst an uptick in the mid-magnitude range seismicity worldwide. Quakewatch.net has the blood echo wind map here, only going to show a couple of zones on the map, the full explanation and other tools available at the Earthquake Prediction Center. We're going to jump up to space. Folks, the ESA solar orbiter just made its first perihelion, coming about halfway between the Earth and the Sun. Like the Parker probe, it has a number of passes to make and tons of data to gather over the coming years. Let's go have a bit of fun, folks. That paper suggesting there are 30 intelligent species in the galaxy right now made it through peer review and hit the Astrophysical Journal yesterday. They say the closest would be about 10 to 20,000 light years away, but I want to mention that their 100 year communication period for advanced societies might be too low for the model. Maybe a thousand years, maybe there's a hundred societies in existence now, and maybe much closer than we think. Sidestepping only slightly here, we've got a suggestion that aliens might be making fast radio bursts. This is indeed D'Amico's hypothesis, and with seemingly numerous characters of those FRBs around the heavens, it now becomes a more solid proposal, thanks to Dr. Zhang from UNLV. Bit of fun up next. Galaxy mergers. There are new animations and studies done from the models of a great collision between the dwarf galaxy and the Milky Way. They not only have that zoomed out shot of the collision, but have another one focused just in on the dwarf intruder as it gets twisted and torn apart. Taking a quick moment to remind everyone that the failures of dark matter to show themselves are about the most constant thing in physics. Here, it's axions, and axion-like particles which are quietly replacing the uber-failed wimp dark matter, but which are equally not real. So let's get a dose of reality. We have suggested that dust is one of the key tricksters in the dark matter game. And today, Dr. Melia has posted a terrific work on how the dust might also be responsible for the cosmic microwave background. The dust would have been injected into space by the first stars, making the cosmic microwave background much younger than they believed given that they currently think it was just a speck into cosmic time with recombination. This non-homogeneous and ever-shifting, emitting, and absorbing medium might even explain the frustratingly useless data irregularities that Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille showed exist in the Planck data. We're going to come back to earthquakes here. When they notice and document, for what must be the thousandth time now, pre-seismic electric anomalies in the atmosphere, they are discussing the global electric circuit and lithosphere-atmosphere-ionosphere coupling of that electromagnetic current. This is why you can use numerous atmospheric signals, just like we do with the blot echoes underground, when it comes to predicting earthquakes. You can learn more about both of those things at quakewatch.net, and for those who have our textbook, that's chapter 7. Now last but not least, a mystery to ponder as you head out on your day. They're not shocked when they find fossils from Russian species that made it to the Americas or that hop from North to South America, or even from Americas to Africa. But back when Australia was closer south to Antarctica, further from Asia and the Americas than it is now, a species managed to hop. Somehow, only the fourth ever such fossil has been unearthed and it's shown up on the other side of the planet from the other three. They have no idea what sort of weirdness caused the creature to find itself in another world, but I bet observers and those who know about the Earth catastrophe cycle can imagine a way or two. We greatly appreciate your support. Tons of great videos on our homepage here on YouTube and at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.